Officials are keeping an eye on water levels in our area. Emily Deem is live in De Pere to explain. Hi, Em. Good morning, Rachel and Pete. Hi, everybody. If you've ever driven over the Claude Alloway Bridge in De Pere and looked over, you've seen the De Pere Dam. And guess where I am this morning? We're talking about the De Pere Dam. I want to introduce Jim Bonetti with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and Miles Winkler with the DNR. Um, we're kind of giving everybody a behind the scenes look. We're talking about water levels, but we want to give a little history lesson, Jim. Why were dams built? Well, first of all, thanks for having us on. Uh, interestingly, yesterday I had a meeting with a gentleman that, that basically grew up in the area and he said, you know, I've been around these dams all my life. I, I don't know why they're here. So um, again, thanks for having us. Uh, the dams were built in the mid-1800 for the, for the purpose of uh, allowing navigation to go from Green Bay to Lake Winnebago. Uh, the river was, was wild at that point, had a lot of rapids, had a lot of rocks jagged edges so dams were created to create pools behind the dams for deeper water so boats could navigate up the system. Um, over the years we've seen a lot of benefits derived from the dams. Um, we've upgraded the dams in the early 1930s but we now have hydropower. We are able to do a lot of flood control with, with the dams which is a great benefit. Um, and industries draw water, municipalities draw water. Um, so a lot, there are a lot of benefits with dams. Um, so as we go forward this morning, we're going to explain what dams are, why they're here, and, and some of the hazards involved with the dams. Well, let's tell people where we're at right now. What is this, where we're standing on? We are at De Pere. Um, this is uh, the last of nine federal U.S. Army Corps of Engineers dams between Menasha and De Pere. So we are on the dam in De Pere. So again, if you go over the bridge that I'm looking at and look down, you're going to see the, the Corps of Engineers dam. And this is the overflow? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, this is what we call the uh, sluiceway section. We have two portions of the dam. There's a spillway section, which I hope we can show later because there are hazards involved with that. Uh, this is a sluiceway section where we actually can regulate water levels using the gates here that we will again show you later on this morning. And you said I could probably have a little hand in that, right? If if mother <laughs> if, if, if Pete will cooperate and not be so cold, so your finger isn't cold, you can push the button and absolutely we'll, you can open a gate. We'll see about that. And, and Miles, you know, we're talking with you with the DNR. There's a lot of people that actually own different portions of the dam. Yeah, this is actually not just the core here. We actually have a paper company to my right over here. They generate hydroelectricity. We actually have the Fox River Navigational System Authority that owns and operates the lock. We actually have the city of De Pere that owns a small portion of the dam. And alongside of that, we have actually uh, Beamster Electric, which is owned by a Bob Shannick. And right now, there's not only private owners, but also different regulatory authority here. So, you know, James is you know, the federal, uh, the paper company is actually by FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, and the Department of Natural Resources, we control the Fox River Navigational System Authority. We're in charge of that. And it's unbelievable. All that I have learned this morning, Rachel and Pete, we're going to have a lot more of you coming up too, like safety. We're going to talk more about water levels in this area. It's pretty good right where we're at, but we're going to have more this morning. It's really cool stuff. Yeah, we'll send it back really to you. Tight.